One of my favourite things about uh, the Bowers Wilkins factory in Worthing in the UK is bringing people for the tour. A lot of people, I think, are surprised. One of the most commonly heard expressions I hear from guests is, I had no idea there was this much to it. It's a big space. I mean, we have 120,000 square feet. We have in excess of 270 people working across a whole series of different disciplines. And we are literally cutting sheet wood. We're going all the way from the raw material all the way through the construction of the cabinet, the finishing and the painting and the polishing of that cabinet through to the construction of all the sub-assemblies that go inside it to produce a finished loudspeaker. It's a hell of a long process. It's a lot of steps and nobody leaves unimpressed. As you walk in through the main factory floor, the first thing you're going to go into is the woodwork section, which is essentially 50% of the overall footprint of the ground floor of the factory and that's producing the cabinets. Now because it's a dirty process that requires a certain amount of creation of dust as an output of cutting wood, we separate it off from the rest of the factory. It's in a humidified environment as well which is hugely important because we have to maintain a constant humidity on the wood to ensure that it doesn't dry up and therefore crack. And also as a corollary of the manufacturing process we're generating a lot of heat. We're pressing wood at somewhere between 135 degrees and 145 degrees Celsius. We will be cutting wood to the correct size. We will be then layering it up with a layer of adhesive between each layer of wood. We'll be then putting it inside one of those wood forming presses. We'll be pressing at anything up to, up to 80 tons vertical and 60 tons horizontal at that 135 degrees Celsius temperature for about 25 minutes when the product comes out of that. It will cool for a period for it to be handleable, then it will go into a five axis CNC robot cutter. It will be machined away to create the appropriate form and shape. It will then go into a tool we call the spreader. The spreader essentially opens the product very gently up and that allows us to then insert what we need inside the loudspeaker to turn it from simply a piece of bent wood into a loudspeaker cabinet. That's our internal bracing system, which we call the matrix assembly, and that also allows us to fit the top and the bottom of the loudspeaker. Once those things are in place, we reverse the tool, so rather than pulling, we're pushing, and the product will sit like that under pressure for two hours. It will then sit for a further two hours without pressure, and at that point, we have created a loudspeaker cabinet. Inside the second area of the factory, we produce the various drive unit assemblies, mid-range and low frequency. We cut the cones to the appropriate sizes, we lay them up into the spiders, we magnetize the magnets, we do all the necessary things. And of course, once the drive units are cut and formed to size, they're going to be put onto an assembly, put into the chassis alongside the spider, the motor system and so forth. That will then be tested and validated before it's packed in box and taken across to the final drive unit assembly line to be actually fitted into the loudspeaker. Upstairs we do the even more sensitive work, the assembly of the high frequency, the diamond dome diaphragm, going alongside the tweeter on top assembly. Of course that's very small, very precise, also very high quality work. We also produce the crossovers and again they're done completely by hand, by hand soldering, with all the correct orientation and each one of those values is again tested as a complete assembly before being taken downstairs onto the final product assembly line. The last stage in terms of putting the loudspeaker together then is bringing together all of those different bits, all of which have been built in other parts of the factory on the final product assembly line and the cabinet itself is then populated up with all of those elements, so the high frequency units, the mid-range units, the low frequency units, the crossover units and so forth. The last stage is testing for the first time the complete loudspeaker. Assuming it passes, which of course it should do, it will then be cleaned, packed in box and sent forward out to the warehouse. One of the things you kind of get asked a lot about loudspeaker manufacturing is how do you make a difference? You have to think about this in terms of the fact that every loudspeaker manufacturer fundamentally understands how a loudspeaker works. The basic principles are very much known science. So how do you make a difference meaningfully when other people also know how to do what you can do or at least the principles of what you can do? It's by focusing on quality. It's by focusing on differentiated technology, if possible, but also on quality of delivery. So it's basically the coming together of everybody in the business every four to five years to try and achieve something significant, a new breakthrough in capability, a new breakthrough in performance. No holds barred. Everything that we know from a technology and performance point of view, trying to produce the ultimate. Now the great thing about that is if you have that as your barometer for performance, then clearly what you do is you leave nothing out there. You push as much as you possibly can. You innovate all the time. It's always been a great experience for me personally as being part and parcel of the launch team for each one of those products to bring those new technologies to both consumers and the press each time we do it because each time we get that wow moment, that reaction moment where people go, that's ridiculous. Where did you come up with that? But that's, I think, the kind of oxygen that fuels the fire behind Bowers and Wilkins. It's the essence of who we are. Ultimately, what we're trying to produce is 
the most high performance loudspeaker that we as a business know how to do. It's the loudspeaker that makes films. It's the loudspeaker that makes music. You see it in recording studios, you see it across the world. You see it all these places in the background, but as a fundamental contributory element to creativity. I always say to people, well, you may not have heard an 800 series loudspeaker, but unwittingly you kind of have, because most of the films that you grew up with and a significant amount of the music that you love was made using those loudspeakers. And that, I think, plays a really powerful role in influencing how much we care about the product and probably how much the world should care about the product.